So what's one of the best ways to get better at Fortnite? You know, many people believe it's aim training, you know, practicing their aim. Other people believe it's practicing their building. But for us, it's actually learning from the pros. So today, we're going to be going over three different top tier pros, man. A scoped, Benji Fishy, CRR, going over their clips. And we're going to learn because they got a lot to show us. So the question of the day is this. What's one of your favorite pros right now? Like who is that person right now that you like to learn from the most? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to see what you guys are gonna say. So we put out Fortnite videos almost every single day. So be sure to like the video and hit that sub button so you don't miss out. And if you're just dying to get better at Fortnite, okay, ProGuys.com guys can teach you what you need to know. We've got exclusive videos and courses by some of the best game's top pros and live coaching available 24 seven. So follow the link in the description or just visit ProGuys.com to get started. All right guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, it's time to scream this out. I got my main man Smokey right here with me. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Smokey, what is that? You trying to kiss me, man? What's in the world? It's that bunch of crunch. We gotta get this going, man. We're hungry. Well, not for him, me. All right, guys, so in this first clip from Benji Fishy, we're gonna see just how crucial the concept of peace control actually is. He uses this to dominate his opponent. And guys, you're not gonna believe who he kills. Take a look. Oh! Phase Mongrel! No! Mongrel, no! Oh my god! <laughs> so, what are the odds he destroys none other than Mongrel like that in a solo match? That's too funny. But notice though, like how easily Benji got that a limb. Yeah, he has a high ground spot at the start, and that gives him the edge in the fight right away. But his peace control was absolutely critical. So when Benji heads inside the building, he places his wall first before Mongrel can, and it blocks Mongrel's path off. That forces him back out the door, which means Benji reads this like a book. He sees Mongrel ramping up, so he uses the roof pieces long reach to cut him off. After he shoots, Benji sees only one remaining exit point, and so he blocks it off with the wall. Some beautiful AR tags later and Mongrel is dead, sent right back to the lobby. All right, guys, so how do you use peace control like that? Well, in this case, Benji reacted to Mongrel's movement. So he spotted where Mongrel was running each time and responded accordingly with the correct piece to block him off. That happened in like three different instances throughout the fight. And in every one, Mongrel got stopped dead in his tracks. So you can either be reactive or proactive, you know, with your peace control in fights like these. Reactive means that you're tracking your opponent. And because you see them heading in a specific direction, you can block that off. On the other hand, you know, proactive peace control is when you put pieces down preemptively, even though you're not sure where your opponent is going to head. One way Benji typically uses proactive peace control is when he ramps over an opponent. He'll just make sure to get control of the floor piece, edit through, and immediately place walls to block his opponent from escaping. He's not always blocking off a specific path or anything like that, but instead, he's doing it to block off potential exit points. All right, guys, so to recap, Benji commands most of his fights and ends them quickly through peace control. You know, it's not something that you can just start doing easily, but you can try to keep the idea, you know, just in the back of your head. Realize that sometimes, guys, it's just better to build first, then go for shots later. You know, I know it's a very counter, you know, intuitive concept, but it doesn't make sense, but it works. And the more you do it, eventually, it'll become second nature for you, just like it is for Benji. Okay, so one of the things we all struggle with the most is, you know, playing stacked in games. They just get so hectic, man, and, and it's just incredibly challenging to follow the action while playing, right? So let's take a peek at this fantastic clutch performance by Scope, Tfue's up and coming duo partner. All right, so he's been on fire lately. So I'm sure there's a lot that we can learn from this guy. All right, so it's the end game now. You know, Scoped and T4 are split from each other, and they have a far run for this next zone. But out of nowhere, an enemy drops right on Scoped. First thing he does, hmm, 
Okay, so he establishes peace control. You know, it doesn't make a huge difference in this case, but either way, it was the right move and he gets the kill. Now that he's got the storm behind him, it's the perfect opportunity to go for storm play with floppers. You know, we're months into chapter two and still guys, players don't expect the storm flake. They're just so hard to predict. You can see right here, I mean like right here, you know, it gets him a free beam on high ground, at which point he immediately cranks up. This is why you carry floppers, guys. Okay, so high ground control is vital for securing wins in the end game. You know, when you have the mats and an opportunity like this, you know, it's often a good idea to just take it, dude. You know, but in this case, you know, he gets blasted down a bit and Tifu, who's on his own now, gets eliminated. You know, it's okay though. Scope still has control of height. From his high ground vantage point, you know, he can see everything, including this lone enemy and the brick box below him. Instead of just, you know, shooting the rocket by itself, he combos with the RPG with the shotgun for a juicy tag and finishes them off with ease. Okay guys, so always combo your RPG with your shoddy, especially if you can see them behind their builds. It's literally like free damage. Do I need to say more? I don't think so. Okay, so after that kill, Scope drops down for the loot. He's getting kind of low on materials now, so he goes for it. When he does that, someone else launches up to height. Oh no. Now he's in a tricky spot, but he keeps his cool and he tunnels in. Okay, so like notice how he's crouching though. Crouch walking is definitely the way to go since you make way less noise, you know, than if you were just standing up. Gotta be sneaky in these situations, man. You know what I mean, right? So if you've been paying attention to Scope's inventory, you might have already figured out his next move here. But in case you didn't, he's got one flopper left, which means another storm play. And not because he's forced to do it, but so that, you know, he can just avoid getting spotted by the enemy. No way they're going to be looking in the storm back there. So he drops down and he lands a clean rocket hit. And look at that, guys, yo. Like when Scope comes in, his opponent doesn't even know where to look. That's the power of fish, my friends. Ooh, nice. Okay, so the rest of his game is played beautifully here i don't know how scope gets the kill right here but somehow some way he picks it up and creates a 1v1 okay so hearing him below he goes for the rpg into a shotgun blast and since he sees he's just dealt white damage all he needs to do is just build up and just wait for the storm to finish them off all right guys so what does scope teach us with that spectacular clutch all right first off floppers are still crazy broken for taking the storm and in games okay so if you combine them with a flank on the high ground players you can secure it for yourself no problem Second, okay, follow up your RPG with a shotgun. Even in situations where the damage might be minimal, every bit counts. Okay, third, height is a huge priority for securing the end game win, man. Especially if you have an RPG to rain down chaos from above. You saw just how contested height was this game, and that's because it genuinely makes a difference. And fourth, crouch walk in those moments, man, where you need to be sneaky. You know, Scope does it, and at the end there, you know, I honestly think it made the difference in him not being hurt in the storm. So duos are a really big thing right now, you know, so to wrap things up, we're going to be taking a look at how the EU legends CRR and Mitro approach fights with teamwork and communication to come out on top. As soon as he comes out. <laughs> laser! Oh my god! Laser! Pull you out! Lady, lady. Did you hear the comms? They said to wait for the second one, then shoot when he comes out. Okay, so guys, that's the sort of communication, man, where you signal when to attack and allows you to deal more damage than, you know, if each player just decided when to shoot on their own. As they close in though, pay attention to how CRR goes one way and Mitro goes the other. You know, it's usually a good idea in duos or squads to pinch in, you know, and just attack from opposing sides. That way, you know, your opponents have two directions to worry about now. And it makes it just more likely you're gonna do things like take walls or really just deal damage. Unfortunately though, Mitro gets smoked by an edit play and now CRR is left by himself. He actually tosses Mitro down the hill so that he avoids getting thirsted, which is a mechanic a lot of us need to start using a lot more in these scenarios. Okay, so getting reckless in a two versus one is never the play, so CRR slows down and he waits patiently for the opportunity. That's when he spots this player by themselves in the metal below. So he jumps down and then applies the pressure with his shotgun. It gets him a knock, then a quick turnaround and some really smooth movement the right of his opponent right over here and the fight my friends is over okay so i just need to clarify why cr was just using his shotgun to replace the wall hmm okay so the epic and legendary tactical shotguns do slightly more damage to structures than you know initial pickaxe wings right so when it comes to like going for walls it's not really a bad idea to use your tax shoddy you know if you're expecting an edit play that way, like when it happens or, you know, if it happens, you're going to be ready. In this case, you know, CRR even lands a pre-fire and he quickly picks up the kill. 
All right, guys, so to recap, what did Ciara and Mitro do to win this fight? First, they coordinated their initial attack. Timing, guys, is everything. So to make sure you communicate, you know, when and who you're attacking, right? Then they pinch from opposing angles. Very smart, I really like that. Which didn't necessarily work out in this case. Still, you know, it's something that you should be doing regardless to make your opponents, like, you know, work harder. And after Mitro got knocked, CR didn't have a whole lot of information, so he just played it slowly and he waited for the right opportunity. And lastly, you know, once CRR saw the opportunity, he kept his shotgun out and he applied pressure with it, which ended up paying off. And for the last kill, he strafed toward the right side of his opponent to make himself a much harder to hit target. All right, guys. Once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Thanks so much for watching, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And, uh, you know, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends what's happening here at Pro Guys. Man, we're having so much fun. We'll see you next time.